Welcome back to our workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to restore these beautiful walnut chairs. Unfortunately, a puppy decided to use them as a chew toy, so there's an H stretcher missing here. Uh, there's a fair bit of damage on this one. The chair back and the arms are loose on these, so I'm going to show you step by step how I go through and fix up chairs like this to get them back into working order. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. The first thing I'm going to tackle is the legs. I need to replace the H stretcher, so I need to turn parts on the lathe. I have a professional wood turner who's come to give me a private lesson on how to improve my turning skills. So I'm not going to be able to show that on video, but I will show you the result here and how everything comes together. So the first step is to take this apart. I'll lay out some padding here and the easiest way to deal with a chair with arms on it when turning it upside down is to take the arms off. Now this one's nice and loose so this one has to get repaired anyway but this one is solid and I can see evidence of repair here at the front where there was a crack and there was a crack here I see a dowel here and this is good and solid. So instead of taking these off I'm just going to turn it upside down. Now the bottom of the chair is where you're going to see evidence of history and you can see that here. Here I can see some glue squeeze out which tells me these two boards had come apart at some point and they were glued together. Here you can see evidence of paint. I'm not sure what color that is, sort of a rusty, pinky, orangey color. And here is some white. So this chair has been painted a few times and it's been stripped. So to take these apart nice and gently, I use quick grip clamps. They reverse on the end here. And that allows me to use them as spreaders. So what I can do is put it in here and gently apply pressure to release the parts. Yeah, that's nice and loose. I'm going to add another one on the front here and we'll get this one loosened up. So it's just a matter of putting pressure on it giving it a little bit of a wiggle and that helps release it from the chair. Okay, that's one out. The key to this is just being gentle and taking your time. You don't want to use a mallet where you could end up breaking something. Now before I get carried away here, what I want to do is label all the parts. So I just write front left, front right on each of these. So I get these legs back in the right position here and my left right orientation is just the way I see it. So this I'm labeling front right. Here's the back left. Here's the back right. Now I am going to replace the H stretcher. So here's the H. But just for the purpose of working on parts here and figuring out the lengths of everything, I'm just going to put them in place here. So we can now take apart the rest of it. Please give us a thumbs up so more people will see our videos. As I'm trying to separate this joint here, as I twist this, you can see this crack opening up here. So this is pretty damaged, but it's odd that it's not releasing. I'm wondering if there might be a finishing nail in there somewhere. I might have to break this off and drill it out, but I don't really want to do that because I want to preserve the shape of that hole. There's the nail right in the bottom. I hate taking these things out, but I'm going to drill around that and then yank out that nail so I can pull the joint apart. So I'm damaging the tenon here, but I'm replacing the piece anyway. So what I want to do is get that nail head in position so that I can try to pull that out. I should be able to get this in here now. Yep, there it comes. There we go. These micro side cutters really are great for grabbing the nail heads, but look how long that nail is that someone drove in there. Glad it wasn't just repairing this and I'm replacing it. So now it should come apart. Are you kidding me? Is there another nail in this? Nope. 
There we go. Okay, so that's one apart. Got a few more to go. I'll pull the H stretcher apart here. Oh, and you can see how much damage has been done here. Wow, it's a good thing we're replacing these. This one seems to be pretty locked in. Looks like there's a nail head there. Let's check these. That seems pretty solid with a lot of glue goop around it. This one's, wow, really loose. Looks like there's some wood that's previously been split off here. And there's likely a nail holding this one together too. Yep, right there. I pulled three more finishing nails out of these joints and got everything apart except for this one here. Uh, this is a solid connection here, so I'm going to leave that one as is. The legs are here. This is the H stretcher. So this is the one that's all chewed up. This is the center of the H stretcher. And then the two ends. And it's been interesting to look at these because there's been some modifications to these. You can see here, this is where that nail went through. And to pull out a finishing nail, you really need to do some damage on the piece. So unfortunately, that one has to get replaced. But this one has been modified. You see the difference in the tenon here. Someone's put a dowel in the end of this. So it's been broken off before and it's been repaired. And if I flip this to the other end, you can see here, there's a wedge. Now, you should never have a wedge tenon inside a mortise like this. Wedge tenons are usually at the bottom of a seat where you can put the wedge in from the bottom. So this is a, I think a technique someone was trying, a hidden wedge tenon, but it's not something that works. And you can see here all the damage I had to do to get that nail out. So a lesson, please don't put nails in chairs. It really does a lot more damage than it does good. So I need to reproduce all three of these parts and on the other chair you've seen it's even worse. So I need six of these in total. Now I've got a professional wood turner who's coming to give me some specific advice on this project so I can be successful. And that's what I like about woodworking is the ability to learn new skills. And the lathe is relatively new to me. It's a skill that I'm building and you're going to see more of those videos as I go forward in my channel and learn more about wood turning. If you're interested in learning about wood turning, there is a video that I've done in a collaboration with Mike Walt out of the UK and it's how to buy a wood lathe. So I'll leave a link in the video description, but I'll share a few tips with you here from a beginner perspective. You want something called a center finder. I've just made this one myself to make sure that you've got the center marked and that way you're going to get the turning not wobbling as you're working through there. This is in the square block and that's why I've got a square in the center here. So right in the middle of that center, I need to use an awl to make a mark and punch a little hole in there. That will be for the live center and for the spur drive. When I'm turning hardwood like this walnut, I like to cut an X in here and that gives my spur drive a little extra depth to penetrate into the hardwood. I line up these teeth in the spur drive with these lines, mount it in here, and we're good to go. If you're thinking about learning about turning on a lathe, I'd highly recommend getting started in wood turning. This is by the American Association of Wood Turners. There are clubs all around for this, and you can learn how to turn in the clubs, but this gives you the basic manual that you need to learn all about wood turning. I'll leave a link in the video description. Having sharp tools is also important for beginners, making sure you get good results and you're not forcing the tools. I've got a video on these CBN grinding wheels you can check out in the video description. I'm showing you my turning here not to learn from my techniques, I'm still working on those. But to give you an idea of what turning is like, taking just a block of wood and turning it into something beautiful is really a lot of fun.
So I've got my parts here. The longest part of the H stretcher um, is now here. This is the one that was really chewed up. And then these two parts are here. Now what I need to do is connect these. And the challenge with this is, when I put that together, this isn't a 90 degree angle. The legs are splayed on the chair. So what I need to do is figure out what angle I've got here so that when I drill the new hole here, I've got it at the same angle that's going to match. Now the way I'm going to measure the angle is I've got a couple of bird's mouth openings here that I use. I'll lay the stretcher in here and get it level. And then I can line this up here and lock in the angle. I'm going to take that angle in the T-bevel and use my saw set. And what I do is just line that up at the line at the bottom. And it gives me the measurement on the top. Now I want this measurement because I'm going to do this on the other chair as well. So I want to be able to reset my T-bevel. So you can see here, it's at four and a half degrees. Now I can take this out and set it aside. And I need to set my new piece in here. And this is where the T-bevel acts as a guide. So I've got a 5 8 inch Forstner bit here. I'm going to drill right in the middle and then pivot it on that angle to get it lined up. Just want to make sure the green pattern is the right way here. So it started, I'll get this lined up here so I can use it as my guide. Now I can cut these to length. What I need to do is just line up the pattern here and then mark them at each end. I'll just set this back in my little cradle here, make it easier for cutting off, and then just trim it with the dovetail saw. Now the last step is to fit the tenon, and I made these slightly larger than what they need to be. There's nothing worse than doing a turning and having a loose tenon. So they're a little bit fat, and they're done that way intentionally, so that what you can do is use a knife and trim that down and get it to fit. And I'll show you an existing one here. You can see where that was done. Right there is where it starts to dip. So that continues all the way around here as it's fit to each part on the chair. All I need to do is line up the two parts, put a line here, and then I can trim that all the way around and progressively fit that. I find it's best to use a carving knife for this because what you can do is scoop and then cut. And that's really recreating what was done on the original piece. Just fine tune it with sandpaper and then give it a test. Yep, nice tight joint. Take a look at that up close. To fit the legs here I need to clear out the old glue so I'm just going to run this backwards and get it to the bottom of the hole. So what I'm doing is letting the drill bit go backwards and it wants to follow the natural angle of that hole. So now I'm at the bottom, I'll put it in forward and I can clear out the old glue. This mortise is really nasty and it's actually smaller than it should be. You can see part of the old tenon here. This is the one where someone had put a dowel on and look at the globs of glue. This is crazy. No wonder this is starting to fall apart. 
On a mortise like this, what I want to do is chip out those pieces to preserve as much of the hole as possible. And then what I'll do is take the angle off of this leg here, match it on that one, and then drill the mortise. I was about to drill this out and I realized I was about to make a mistake. I've got two front legs here and the angle on the front legs is different than the angle on the back legs. They're splayed at different angles. So when I went to use the other back leg as a reference point, I realized there's a huge problem with this mortise. At the bottom here, there was a chunk that came out. So I thought I'd glue that back in. This is where there's a previous split but I'm realizing there's a lot of fill here. And if I try to put a tenon in here, there's a lot of play. And even if I were to fill this with epoxy, I'm not convinced that would provide the strength that a chair needs for all the abuse it gets. So I've got to turn a new leg now. Well, I'm really happy with getting through this leg, but before I show it to you, I'll tell you when I turn these first six stretchers, there were two disasters I started out with. So the first one went well, the second one didn't go well, the third one went well, the fourth one didn't. So I was a little bit nervous turning this leg, but I was able to pull it off. So here's the new leg and it matches really well. I'm happy with how it turned out. There's even a detail here that I had to use a wire to burn in a mark. And that's the point where this mortise gets drilled. Now, I still have the problem, I don't know the angle of where these mortises are supposed to be drilled. But fortunately, I have a second chair and there is a leg that the mortise is intact and the tenon's intact. So I'm going to take the measurement off of that and then I'll drill the holes in this, drill the holes in this other leg and we'll be all ready to go. Well, this chair is much more destroyed here and here. It's giving me this angle here that I need. So by putting my T-bevel on the bench here and using that as my horizontal surface, I can line this up with the middle here and the middle here. And that will tell me what angle I need to drill the hole on my new leg. So to clear out this old hole here and get the hole drilled in the right direction, I can't clamp it in here because I need to keep it flat. So I'm just going to use a wedge here and the other thing is, because this is a back leg, there's another stretcher that's here. I need to put this together and dry fit it. And I need to get this at the right angle. Now, let me just get that level again. So here's the angle that I've measured. I know how that's going to go this way, but there's another angle this way because the front legs are wider than the back legs. So I've got the H stretcher here. And this is how it was assembled. Something like that. So I'll move the camera around here and you can see how this is splayed out. So here it is from the other angle. So I need to work at this angle and the angle of that T bevel to get that hole drilled at the right angle that the chair is going to go back together again. So this is where the new stretcher will go. Now if I turn this around and take this out, this is the leg that I'm replacing. So the first thing I need to do is drill this into here, but I've got yet another challenge. I can't seem to pull this apart. There's got to be a nail hidden somewhere, but I don't want to damage this piece. I don't want to have to return this piece. 
So what I'm going to have to do is break this leg apart to get that out intact. I've got the existing part here and I just level it up to make sure it's flat. And here what I'm going to do is measure this angle so I can drill the hole for the stretcher. I've marked the center location here so I can now start this and I'm going to start it in the vise because I've got much more control there. So I just need to block up this in here because the only spot I'm getting a grip when I clamp this in is right here. This is just free floating. Okay, so I've now got a good spot, secure spot, to start that hole. So I've got that started. Now I can go just a little bit deeper and then start on the angle. Oh, this is gonna mess me up. I have to cut that off first. Okay, walk this back up. Now to prevent it from rolling, I'm going to add a clamp on the top here. Another one at the bottom. Okay, get this in place. Okay, so with that first hole drilled, we're starting to have legs come together. 
the next hole is here. So I need matching mortises and I need to set my T-bevel back to this angle which was 17 degrees right there and then I need the H stretcher back So this is the messed up end. I need to get this worked in at the right angle. No, I don't. How does that work? I think this will work. angle I'm looking for is this angle. I'm just getting a little mixed up. Okay, so I've got this angle that I need, this angle that I need, so I can now drill the hole right here. now have a pair of opposing legs so we're good to go here I have to trim this off to the length here and I've got some excess at the bottom here and because this is cut at an angle and there's also a foot on there I think I'm going to leave that until the end until I assemble it and then I know when I cut it I'm cutting it at the right angle and it will be parallel to the surface that it's going to sit on cut the length I can now make room to bring back the chair seat just want to make sure I've got padding at the front of the bench here so I don't damage the back of the chair okay so we can test fit these pieces so like any seat this is the back right so it's here need to clean off the joints. So I've got glue here I need to clean off. I've got glue in here I need to clean off. And then we can fit the new pieces in and make sure everything's going to work before we put glue on. On the tenon here there's a bunch of residue. I need to clean that off so I've got bare wood. And here you can see there's some glue that's been left over from a repair. That'll just chip off because it's been applied to a finish and glue can't stick to a finish. So get that cleaned up and then move on to the mortises. Okay, so that's ready to go here. Now to clean out the mortise, I use a drill bit, go backwards into the hole, and then forwards to clear out the glue. You can see here, I'm not at the bottom of the hole yet. What I want to see is clean wood. There's still some glue in there, and that could prevent the tenon from going as deep as it should. There, that's what I'm looking for. Bare wood at the bottom of the hole, it's all clean. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips, and more. Now back to fixing furniture. So I can put these in now. This is the front left, so it's going over here. This is the front right, so it's going over here. This is the back right here. And then this is the new leg that's going over here, but it doesn't fit. Again, this is cut oversize. 
you can see right here where this was previously shaped. So I'm going to use that same line for my guidance to fit that to the chair. As you get closer to the fit, what I can do is just roll that around a little bit and it'll give me some indication as to how much more material I need to take off. I fine tune it with a file and get it down so I can get a nice fit. With this new leg now fit, it's time to start assembling it. So this is the way I had the back labeled. Okay, and now these pieces, I have to go through the same process as this. I have to get these to fit in here, in each of the spots. I've got everything fitting together well, except for this back stretcher right here. It is really loose, and I see why now someone tried to put wedges in here, because it's just not fitting on either side here. So the technique I use to address that is I have a container here of thick shavings. And what I'm going to do is glue on here a shaving all the way around. I'll let that glue dry and then that'll give me a thicker tenon to be able to shape that, get it in there and get a really nice snug fit. I've glued up the plain shaving on this so I'll take this off and you can see what it looks like. I just hold them on with elastics, it works really well. So there you go. Now I just need to get that the right thickness to go on the mortise and we should have a nice tight fit. After a bit of filing, you can see here, I've got a nice snug fit to get that in there. Okay, we'll start the glue up. So it's really important to dry fit everything. That way your glue up will go well and you'll have no surprises when you're at that critical point with the glue setting. Now this is not a traditional way that I would glue up a chair. I would normally stand it up, put some weight on it, make sure it's all level, but I have to level this leg. So the chair, if it's slightly off kilter, leveling this leg here is going to make everything perfectly straight. So we'll let that dry and we're all together. The last step I have to do here is just get out my clean water and a rag and wipe up any leftover glue. The glue is dried so I can take the clamps off now and then what we'll do is level up this leg and get it cut to the right length. So I'm set the chair here and it's touching on all three legs but you can see this one's way too long. Now what I'm going to do is use my bench as a reference to draw a line all the way around this leg. So by putting this here, what I'm doing is just marking where the top surface of the bench is. I just continue to rotate this around, draw the pencil line as far as I can go this way. Because I've got a long board, I've got a good long reference space to be able to bring this line around the front of this leg. Now we'll just visually connect those two lines and then we've got a cut line. Now I can lay the padding back down. We'll turn this on the side and trim the leg. I can't cut right on this line because there's a foot on these and that foot protrudes a little bit. So I need to cut a little bit back from that line to get this leg exactly where I need once I get this middle foot put back on the end of this.
So here you can see there's a straight sharp line here and on this end here it's really um, rough. So there's some dents in it. It's definitely rounded from wear. So I need to do a similar thing here just so this doesn't stand out as being brand new. And then I need to take this little foot off here and my experience is sometimes these break as you pull them out and I don't want that to happen so I'm just going to cut it back about here and then use a chisel to split it and get that out all in one piece. <laughs> This chair is now solid and not rocking, so it's all great. The last step to finish this chair is to put the finish on. Now this chair is a little bit odd in that it doesn't have a protective finish. It's just got an oil finish. Um, I suspect there's some color that's been added here, so if I just put oil on this walnut, I don't think it's going to match. I've got some samples here that I'm going to use to do a match. I think it's probably a chestnut color. And um, what I'll do is maybe need to put a couple coats on this. In between putting on the coats, I've got a loose arm here that needs some attention. It's just a screw here, a cap here and a screw. Take it apart, glue it back together, and that'll be done. And then I can move on to the other chair. I've got a variety of penetrating stains here. I normally use water-based stains, but sometimes you need to do what's gonna match best for the piece of furniture. And since this doesn't have a film finish on it, a protective coating, I'm going with penetrating stain. So my guess is that this color will be the closest match. This is called an English chestnut. It's got a bit of a reddish color to it. I guess maybe orange is more way to describe it. So I kept these pieces on purpose because I want to be able to test samples. There might be, that isn't getting mixed up yet. There might be a situation where one of these five stains isn't going to work. And I'm going to have to use two stains to get to that color. But hopefully this one will do it and I'll make it quick and easy. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this, get some color on, and we'll give it a try. So we'll just give it a minute, I'll come back and wipe that. I left this for about 10 minutes and you can see it's got the right tones. It's a little bit dark. So I think if I wipe it on, wipe it off, it should work. I'm gonna try it on the sanded piece because uh, sanded areas will take less stain than rough areas. So wipe this on, set that aside, wipe this off. Let's see what we've got. I'd say that's a match.
I pulled off the arm here and you can see some of the old glue and some of the finish that's been trapped under there. This is from furniture stripping. And the screw that was in here was firm, but unfortunately it's not grabbing this arm. It's, you can see here, some threads were in some glue. So what I need to do is put a longer screw in here when I reattach this to make sure I've got a really strong connection. I'll clean this up, glue it back together, and we're good to go. I'm ready to put the arm back on. What I've done is drilled out a slightly larger hole. And this is the new screw. I just have to drill a pilot hole into this part here, and then we'll be good to go on that one. So that won't be an issue. And then over here, uh, this screw head was stripped and really, really hard to get out. So I've got a new screw to replace that one as well. So I'll drill the pilot hole here, we'll glue it up, and then get this arm back on. I'm using hide glue here, and you've probably heard me say this before. Hide glue is what you want to use when you're working with antiques. When you're restoring something, because that way, if something happens in the future, you can take the piece apart, because hide glue is the only glue that's reversible. With heat, or warm water, or vinegar, you can reactivate the glue and then you can take the piece apart. So if something breaks, you can gently take it apart so you can replace the broken piece. Now, normally you have to scrape off all glue surfaces, but the other nice thing about high glue is high glue sticks to high glue. So I do have some glue residue on the bottom here, but because it's high glue, the glue I'm applying right now is activating the existing glue there, so it's not a concern. Also, when you've got end grain like this, the end of the grain, it's not that strong, but this will just give a little extra hold that it normally wouldn't have. The last step is to put the screw cap back on and you just need a little dab of glue on one end and then the other. It's just enough to hold it in place, but you don't want to coat the whole thing in glue because at some point somebody's going to have to pull this off in the future. It might be hard to see on the camera, but there's a bit of a color difference between this new leg and the existing piece. And when the stain went on and it was wet, it looked great. But now it's all flat. So I'm going to use Howard's Feed and Wax and put a coat of wax on. And that will bring the color back up. So this is a product that goes on, you leave it on for about 20 minutes and then come back and wipe it down and then you can decide how you want to buff it up. I like the luster that's come up here but it's actually contrasting to this which is lacking a bit of luster. And the finish up here is looking a little dusty, a little tired so I think I'm going to give the whole thing a coat of wax and just even it out. There are also a few areas here that have some dust on them and they don't seem to be wiping off. So I'm going to use some mild soap and water to wash everything down and that'll get it ready for the wax. So I put one drop of soap in this container of water here, just mixed it up and it's the mildest solution you can use to clean off furniture. The next mildest would be going to something like a, a Varsol, um, a paint thinner, but if it's got a wax finish and I suspect this one does have some wax just because the way that the uh, dust is sticking to it, um, it will take the wax off. And I don't want to do that. Really, I just want to clean off any grime here. So I'm not going to capture it in the new coat of wax that I'm going to put on. You can see here what a difference this is making, cleaning it up. Just giving it a bit of a scrub. Here you can see the dust build up in these rings. So it's just a matter of giving it a good scrub. And what it does is it brings back the color of the wood a little bit. 
but more importantly it gets that dirt out so it's not going to get trapped in the wax and then end up causing even darker rings where there's paint stuck in the creases here i'm just using a touch-up marker and covering those up before i put the wax on now that the chair is clean you can see little paint spots here easiest way to take those up is with a plastic razor blade Putting on this Howard's Feed and Wax is fun because you can see such a transformation. It's got orange oil in it so it penetrates into the wood. And you can see here it's quite a difference. I just need to let it sit for 20 minutes and then buff it up for a nice finish. I'm going to wrap up this video right here. I've got this next chair to put together, but I'm going to do that in a separate video. I'll give you some finished close-ups of this chair and you can see how it's turned out. Now the next video is going to focus on assembling this chair. This one has been really chewed up by a dog. There's half a piece missing here. There's one whole stretcher that's missing here. So I've got some replacement to do there. And there are a couple parts on here that are split. So I'll show you how to fix those and use a syringe to get glue in there. I'm testing out a new glue, which is a, a dark type bond glue. So there's a few things that you want to see there. And I'm going to focus this on the assembly. I've had a few comments from viewers that they don't like me speeding up, me gluing things up. And I haven't thought about that before, but there's actually some education I can give you. As I glue this up, I'll show you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So that'll be part two. As always, please help us out. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube it's a quality video and they'll share it with more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click over here, click on the bell icon, and you get notified every time we publish a video. Let me know what you think of this video. I love reading your comments, and thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <music>